what's going on guys so i have finished my electrical upgrades for land rover for this part we'll call it like a phase one um, got my second battery installed got all my accessory wiring done added a bunch of cool uh, lights and accessories to make camp life a little bit easier and a little bit better so i showed you the install the second battery now i'm going to show you how i got all this stuff wired in obviously this is specific to my vehicle and it would be um, specific to your vehicle if you're going to kind of copy my system but the components would be the same right so we got the second battery right now i'm just running a regular lead acid cranking battery i know it's definitely not ideal but in the near future uh, i'm planning on installing two optimas probably gonna do a yellow top cranking battery and a blue top deep cycle battery for here got these really nice marine grade battery posts which i got these off amazon pretty cheap but they're solid brass and they're they're really nice and sturdy um, so I'll show you how I kind of got that stuff wired in. Uh, follow the wiring down under the fuse box, comes over to my uh, smart battery isolator. This thing's pretty cool, so when you crank the truck, it only sends power to the cranking battery until this battery reaches 13.3 volts. Then it kicks on the smart, biter, smart isolator and starts sending charging power to both batteries. So as you're driving down the road, you'll be charging your accessory battery. Um, but you're only cranking off of your cranking battery which is pretty cool i have this other solenoid in here this is not wired in yet but this is going to be set up in the future to where i can press a button and link the two batteries together i'm also going to have it set up to where i can press a button and isolate the battery so if my cranking battery goes dead i'll be able to crank my truck off my accessory battery and vice versa so that's what this is all set up for uh, all right so down there you see my inline fuse i was running the aux beam 60 amp circuit breaker but i was having a little bit of issues with it i think it was because of the heat under the hood i'm not pulling any power off that thing but it would it would trip and not send power to my aux beam without actually i'd have to reset it and it would start working again I did it twice a buddy of mine said he was having some issues with his too so i just went ahead and put in an inline fuse so got that there taken care of i'm also going to spray some of that battery protectant on that to keep any corrosion down on there and then the wires run through that nice little grommet down through the firewall I'm real happy about so before we go into the truck i gotta show you this guys awesome underhood leds uh, wally hooked me up with this um switch right here this is a like position switch so as the hood closes it turns the light off and you open the hood it turns the light on it's just stuck on there with some stick uh double side sticky tape right now just kind of dialing it in i'm going to build like a little bracket for it because it needs to be at a little bit of a downward angle for it to stay off when the hood is closed so for right now it's just kind of stuck up there temporary through a trial basis but i'm super happy with it i know right now in the bright daylight it doesn't seem like much uh, but i'll roll in a picture those lights at night light up this entire engine compartment super super nice make it handy just doing stuff around camp doing you know maintenance checking oil that kind of thing but if i do got to work on this truck at night i do have some extra light there which is going to be super handy so one of the things that I did is I installed this dual USB charger. Um, it's hot wired directly to the auxiliary battery. So it has a cool little on off switch and it has a uh, voltmeter in it, but that's hot all the time. So I can charge cell phones and stuff. Um, cable management's kind of important to me. I keep both my phones up here on these brackets. So I just tidied up these wires by drilling a couple holes in the, this is like the cup holder delete. This truck doesn't have the pop out cup holders. It's got the good ones. Um, so I was able to just kind of manage those cables. So they come up here out of the way, out of the way any of these buttons, out of the way of the ashtray and kind of keeps it out of the way of the aux beam. So happy with that. So the first thing I did is I installed a little map light type deal up here on the center console. Um, just to add a little bit of light inside the truck that can run off the accessory battery. So I get a little bit of light up here. So I got that going. I did wire in my rock lights into the aux beam and then I wired in some rear cargo area lights, which I'll show you here in a second. So we got that all set up. I'm real happy how that's going so far. Um, got this wired up to an accessory circuit that I'm not using yet, but I do have power running into the back. So if I do want to tie something in, it's already set up and ready to go. I was super happy how that works, how that's mounted. Uh, I was able to mount it right here in the center console. It doesn't interfere with the uh, transfer case shifter. The wire's tucked up underneath the console. Can't see it. Nice and clean. So that's where I've mounted the aux beam control panel. So now I'll show you how I got it all wired up in the back. So I decided to mount the aux beam 
control box on the back of the center console. I kind of wanted this to be the hub of electronics for the, my for all my 12 volt accessories. Makes it super handy when you're adding stuff. There's a ton of room in the back of the center console that's not being used, and it gives me a really good spot to run wires to inside the cab of the truck. That's easy, consistent. Um, you can run them underneath the dash and along the console and up into the back of this console here. So the way this is set up right now, I got my uh, main power and ground coming in. This is grounded right here to the chassis. And then you got your wire that runs up to your control panel. Up, and then whatever you want to run 12 volt accessory wise, you just come in the back of the console and screw it in right here. All your fuses, all your solid state relays, all that stuff's built right in here. So when it comes to wiring a 12 volt accessory, all you got to do is run power. You don't even have to run ground to this because this is grounded to the chassis. And as long as you ground your 12 volt accessory to the chassis, you're good to go. But you can either run hot and ground or just ground right to the chassis, which is pretty cool. So real happy how that's working out. It makes it good spots and keep it out of the dust and dirt and grime and water from underneath the hood. They say they're waterproof and everything. I'm sure they are. But this is where uh, I decided to mount it. Down here at the bottom of the console, I've done kind of my main power supply for the back of the truck. So this turns the aux beam system on and off. So that's what actually gets the power going to this. So this can just stay on. This is running off of the accessory battery. Gives me dual USBs back here in the back of the truck for charging cell phones and stuff at night. And a 12 volt socket right here. So if I want to run anything, I can just run it out of that right there. So real happy how that's worked out so far. Uh, this first camping trip coming up is going to kind of be the test for that to see if it's exactly how I want it. But real happy with it. Like for right now, uh, GoPro batteries. I got my GoPro charger in the center console so all i gotta do is plug that in and now my GoPro, gopro batteries are on charge all the time which is always something i struggle with even with a dual usb up there trying to charge both phones i was always having to kind of switch back and forth between everything um, so i either have one phone charging and batteries charging and just always kind of a, a hassle so i'm real happy how this is going to work out i think uh, but this next trip coming up will kind of be the test for it all so back here at the back of the truck being at camp and being able to have some light to work with back here has kind of always been a struggle for me. I did install this little battery powered um, LED light back here on the third brake light. It works. It puts off a decent amount of light, but it runs off of double A's and they don't last all that long. And if you leave it on and forget it, obviously the batteries be dead the next morning. My other option was to come back here and turn the factory dome light on, which again works, but it's running off my cranking battery. It's just an LED, but I, I just never liked this light. It doesn't project a whole lot of light. It's enough to kind of get by, but I always found myself still using like a headlamp back here and stuff. And then obviously when you leave the doors open in this truck, all the dome lights eventually time out. So if you're out here and you open the door and that light's on, you know, 10 minutes goes by and they shut off, kind of a pain in the butt. So what I ended up doing is I installed these cool little lights that I got from my buddy Wally. Um, and I'll show you some pictures at night. They are super bright. I'm very, very happy when they light this whole area up and they're running off of the accessory battery so I can just leave them things on all day long. And they're only pulling like half an amp each. So even with all of my LEDs on, all of my, my camp lights running my, my rock lights for some kind of accent lighting and these lights and the map light up in the center console, I'm pulling like an amp and a half two amps off the battery so this should last a long long time and this way i can charge all my cell phones all my camera batteries all while sitting at camp with not having to have the key ignition and the ignition on so that's the biggest reason why i've done all this is so when i'm at camp i don't have to run my accessories you know my key on the accessory position and chance going to bed and forgetting about it and waking up to a dead battery the next morning so this is going to make camp life a whole lot better. It's going to be making, keeping all my camera batteries, my drone battery, all that stuff charged up, keep my phones charged up. And as I expand into this build, I'm planning on doing like a full camper conversion on this truck moving forward once I get the green disco up and running. Having all that power ready to go already hooked up in this truck is going to be awesome. When I install a fridge, hot and ground to the aux beam, hit a button, it's on all that stuff and I'll be able to run all off of my accessory battery which is going to be pretty cool. So that's my dual battery setup uh, for my Land Rover for this upcoming trip. It's going to be kind of the test run of it see if there's anything that needs to get tweaked or anything I need to change but so far I'm super super happy with it. So appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you on the trail this week. Thanks guys.